Welcome to Champions of Care, brought to you by Oakwood Healthcare. Today, we're talking about hip pain. And whether you're experiencing a painful twinge now and then, or whether you've been living with chronic hip pain, our guest today will have a lot to teach you about how to get relief for your hip pain. With me in the studio today is Dr. David Siraz, an, a family medicine physician practicing in Belleville. Welcome to Champions of Care. Thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Well, we're very happy to have you. And you, you're a unique type of physician. You're trained as a MD, a medical mm -hmm. doctor, but you're also a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And so what does your chiropractic background <coughs> combined with your family medicine expertise tell you about hip pain? Well, what I try to do when I see patients in the examining room is I try to bring that uh, unique perspective, that training in uh, chiropractic to the examining room to help patients um, understand there may be different options available for them as far as treatment for their hip pain and just help them uh, give them more options and other things that they can consider. So how does a hip work? What, what's going on in there that causes pain? So a hip joint is a fairly simple joint but at the same time it's actually complex in how it works. It's a ball and socket so you have the um, ball which is the leg bone connected to the hip bone and that leg bone is the ball and then there's a socket as well. Um, that creates a joint that then can move and um, it's a fairly deep joint but it doesn't have a lot of space around it or in it. So when you have inflammation or any type of an injury you can get um, fluid that comes into that joint can cause pain and inflammation. Um, you also have a lining of cartilage around the ball of the joint that's um, uh, cartilage over that he the femoral head and then you also have a ring of cartilage around the hip joint and all those things can get injured they can have uh, wear and tear w as we, we get older um, then you also have a capsule around that joint that um, stabilizes the joint and limits its motion that can um, get inflamed and mm -hmm. cause pain you have muscles and ligaments that surround the joint that can cause uh, repetitive strain injuries, overuse injuries, that can be a source of pain. You um, have um, a bursa in the joint, which is a uh, fluid-filled sac that can get, you've heard of maybe bursitis, that yes. can be mm -hmm. uh, a source of pain. And then you also have these strange um, things called referred pain, where the pain is actually somewhere else. So it could be in the back, it could be in the upper nerve roots of the back that can refer pain to the hip. And that can be a cause of pain. So those are so although it's a simple ball and socket joint, it has complex uh, anatomy and uh, mechanics that can cause a lot of different sources of pain. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention with hip pain is because I'm a family physician that sees children as well, I think it's important to remember that anytime you have a hip pain in a little one or in, in your children, mm -hmm. any of the viewers watching that have children, if your child complains of hip pain, that's something that's very important to take seriously because that can get um, serious very quickly. So um, hip pain isn't normal. Pain isn't normal even if as we age and, and I know some older people who say oh I'm getting old of course I'm gonna have pain. As a family medicine physician you want those folks to come in and see you. Yeah I think it's very important that although um, you know patients tell me all the time well arthritis runs in my family and I, and I tell them sort of jokingly that arthritis doesn't necessarily run in families, it runs in humans. A lot of us mm -hmm. will have some um, pain and arthritis as we get older, but if we think of our body as machines that you need to maintain and keep healthy, so things like reducing your weight if you're overweight, exercising, stretching, um, doing these things, um, diet that, has, uh, that promotes healthy bones, maybe getting your vitamin D level checked, um, that, ha that has an impact on um, bone mineralization. All these things are things that patients can do to help them uh, have less pain as they get older. Dr. Siraz, what non-surgical options are available to treat hip pain? Well, there's really uh, quite a few. There's over-the-counter medications, things like Tylenol and anti-inflammatory medications like Motrin or Ibuprofen that can help with uh, hip pain, any kind of joint pain actually. They can either be over-the-counter or prescribed by a physician. So that's one option as well as physical therapy, perhaps manipulation, by either by an osteopath or by a chiropractor. Those are other options as well. 
Now, there are a lot of people, a lot of people watching right now, who don't realize the whole spectrum of options for dealing with joint pain. And those options can range from doing nothing to surgery. Mm -hmm. Oakwood Healthcare offers a class called Joint Class 101, and I know you've been one of our physician experts who've mm -hmm. participated in that, mm -hmm. but we want to invite all the viewers to come to Joint Class 101. It's free, and uh, we have a little video sneak peek at mm -hmm. what Joint Class 101 looks like. Let's watch it. Good evening and welcome to Oakwood's Ortho Joint Class 101. My name is Jeff Klein. And I'm going to be your moderator for tonight. Oakwood Ortho University is a program that we have implemented to provide educational resources for the community members. Our philosophy is unique in that we want to provide options for treatment, care pathways that is, and introduction to expert physicians in their specialty. Well, I think the nice thing about Oakwood's Joint Class 101 is that it's open to anybody uh, that wants to learn more about um, joint problems, namely the shoulder, hip, and knee, and they can hear the opinion of various medical specialists, a whole wide range, and learn from their experience and their knowledge in an open forum type environment. The person who should come to a Joint 101 class is the type of person who feels that their pain in such as their knee or their hip or their shoulder is now interfering in their life in such a way that they cannot do the usual and customary things that they used to do that made their life enjoyable and livable. These type of people can benefit the most because not everybody needs a joint replacement. There are many treatments that could benefit them. If one has to go to a joint replacement, the technology has made huge strides. They have been known to run marathons on knee replacements now. Uh, there are people who are skiing on hip replacements. So the technologies have made significant strides, but I would be the first to tell you that not everybody's going to need a joint replacement. We want our, our community members to be healthy and be able to care for themselves to some degree. If not, then we've provided them with the resources, we've given them some education, that is a big component of what we do at Oakwood um, to help them solve their problem on their own. If not, we've got some fantastic experts that can help them get through that pain. Dr. Siraz, one of the things I learned in Joint Class 101 is that one of the many options to dealing with my joint pain is to have my primary care physician figure it out for me. Mm -hmm. Now, you are a primary care physician. How does that happen in your, in your office? Well, I think um, it's very important that when, if any of the viewers out there don't have primary care physicians, I think it's important to um, call and get one. I think that's a critical thing because the primary care physician acts as the gatekeeper to your medical care. And uh, when somebody comes in to me with hip pain, it's my job to figure out, is this something that we can take care of in the office? Is this something that I can prescribe medication for or get them into physical therapy? Or is this something that where they can do on their own at home with exercises and stretches? Or is this something um, that they need to have surgical intervention or at least a consult with a surgical specialty? So there's a lot of different options available to patients and it's my job to figure out what fits their needs best. And as we said earlier in the show, you're unique as a physician being a medical doctor in family care mm -hmm. and also having served as a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. So you really have a, a bigger toolbox of mm -hmm. options to deal with that hip pain than most, don't you? Absolutely. Yep. Great. Well, um, at what point would you say a patient should come in and talk to you? Well, I think uh, for, with hip pain specifically, if you're unable to bear weight or you can't walk or you're limping very badly, I think that should be a red flag for you to come in and speak to your physician. If um, you have tried some of these home remedies, maybe that you heard on TV or saw on the internet, you're doing the over-the-counter medications or you're doing the ice and the rest and it just isn't working and your hip pain is still there or it's getting worse, I think that's a time when you should really come in and see somebody about it because it may be uh, an early sign of something more serious. And Dr. Sraz, if someone wants to come in and see you, they will find you at oakwood.org. You're in the Oakwood Healthcare System and you practice in oh. Belleville. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate you. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. For all of our viewers who are wondering about the hip pain they're experiencing, you can sign up for a free 
jointclass101 at oakwood.org and learn for yourself the myriad of treatment options available to deal with your hip pain. We'll take a short break now and then we'll learn more about additional options to deal with that hip pain.